Another Friday, another Joe Lums movie review. This week I cover 1987's RoboCop. Don't forget to subscribe to my video, like my videos, click the notification bell. When a new video comes out, you can just check it out for yourselves. And now on to the video. RoboCop is a 1987 American sci-fi action film directed by Paul Her Verhoeven and written by Edward Neumar. Neumeyer and Michael Miner. The film stars Peter Weller, along with Nancy Allen, Daniel O'Harely, Ronnie Cox, Kurtwood Smith, and Miguel Ferrer. The film is set in a crime-ridden Detroit in the near future. Robocop centers on police officer Alex Murphy, played by Peter Weller, who was murdered by a gang of criminals and revived by the megacorporation Omni Consumer Products, a.k.a. OCP, as a cyborg law enforcer by the name of Robocop. Unaware of his former life, Robocop executes a campaign against crime while coming to terms with the lingering fragments of his humanity. The film was conceived by Neumeyer while working on a set of Blade Runner in 1982. He developed the idea with Miner. Their script was purchased in early 1985 by producer John Davidson on behalf of Orion Pictures. Finding a director proved difficult. Verhoeven dismissed the script twice because he did not understand its satirical content until he was convinced of its value by his wife. Filming took place between August and October of 1986, mainly in Dallas, Texas. Rob Botton led the special effects team in creating the practical effects, violence, gore, and the Robocop costume. Verhoeven emphasized violence throughout the film, making it so outlandish that it became comical. Censorship boards believed that it was too extreme. However, and several scenes were shortened or modified to receive an acceptable theatrical rating of R. Robocop was a financial success upon its release in July of 1987, earning $53.4 million. Reviewers praised it as a clever action film with deeper philosophical messages and satire but were conflicted about its extreme violence. The film was nominated for several awards and won an Academy Award and a number of Saturn Awards. When it came to the conception and writing of Robocop, it was conceived in the early 80s by Universal Pictures junior story executive and aspiring screenwriter Edward Neumeyer. A fan of robot themed sci-fi films, Star Wars and action films, Neumeyer had developed an interest in mature comic books while researching them for potential adaptation. The 1982 sci-fi film Blade Runner was filming on the Warner Brothers lot behind Neumeyer's office, and he unofficially joined the production team to learn about filmmaking. His work gave him the idea of Robocop. He said, I had a vision of a far distant Blade Runner type world where there was an all-mechanical cop coming to a sense of real human intelligence. He spent the next few nights writing a 40-page outline. While researching story submissions for Universal, Neumeyer came across a student video by aspiring director Michael Miner. The pair met and discussed their similar concepts. Neumeyer's Robocop and Miner's robot-themed rock music video. In a 2014 interview, Miner said that he also had an idea called Supercop. They formed a working partnership and spent about two months discussing the idea and two to three months riding together at night and over weekends. In addition to their regular jobs, their collaboration was initially difficult because they did not know each other well and had to learn how to constructively criticize each other. Neumeyer was influenced to kill off his main character early by the psychological horror film Psycho, released in 1960, whose main character was killed early in the film. Inspired by comic books and his experience with corporate culture, Neumeyer wanted to sat satirize the 1980s business culture. He noted the increasing aggression of American financial services in response to growing Japanese influence and the popularity on Wall Street of the Book of Five Rings a 17th century book about how to kill more effectively, Neumeyer also believed 
that Detroit's declining automobile industry was due to increased bureaucracy. Ed 209's malfunction in the OCP boardroom was based on Neumeyer's office daydream about a robot bursting into a meeting and killing everyone. Miner described the film as a comic relief for a cynical time. During the presidency of Ronald Reagan, when economics Milton Friedman and the Chicago Boys ransacked the world, enabled by Reagan and the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. So when you have this cop who works for a corporation that insists, I own you, and he still does the right thing, that's the core of the film. Neumeyer and Miner conceived in the in-universe news and advertisement, media breaks that appear throughout RoboCop, uh, and a spec script was completed by December of 1984. We now get to the plot of the movie. In a near future dystopia, Detroit is on the brink of social and financial collapse, overwhelmed by crime and dwindling resources. The city grants the mega corporation Omni Consumer Products, OCP, control of the Detroit Police Department. OCP senior president Dick Jones, played by Ronnie Cox, demonstrates Ed 209. A law enforcement droid designed to supplant the police, Ed 209 now functions and brutally kills an executive, allowing ambitious junior executive Bob Morton to introduce OCP's chairman, the old man played by Dan O'Harely, to his own project called Robocop. Meanwhile, Officer Alex Murphy is transferred to the Metro West Precinct. He and his new partner, Ann Lewis, pursue notorious criminal Clarence Bodiger, and his gang, Emil Antonowski, Leon Nash, Joe Cox, and Steve Min. The gang ambush and tortures Murphy until Boddicker fatally shoots him. Morton has Murphy's corpse converted into Robocop, a heavily armored cyborg with no memory of his former life. Robocop is programmed with three prime directives. Serve the public trust, protect the innocent, and uphold the law. A fourth prime directive Directive 4 is classified. Reassigned to Metro West, Robocop is hailed by the media for his brutality efficient campaign against crime. Lewis suspects that he is Murphy. Recognize the unique way he holsters his gun, a trick Murphy learned to impress his son. After experiencing a nightmare of Murphy's death during maintenance, Robocop encounters Lewis, who addresses him as Murphy. While on patrol, Robocop arrests Emil, who recognizes Murphy's mannerisms. This further Robocop's recall. Robocop then uses the police database to identify Emil's associates and review Murphy's police record. He recalls further memories while exploring Murph Murphy's former home, his wife and his son, moved away after his death. Elsewhere, Jones gets Bodiger to kill Morton as revenge for Morton's attempt to usurp his position at OCP. Robocop tracks down Bodiger's gang and after a shootout brutally interrogates Bodiger until he admits working for Jones. He cannot kill Bodiger, however, as that would violate his prime directives. Robocop attempts to arrest Jones at the OCP tower, but Directive 4 is activated. A fail-safe measure to neutralize Robocop when he acts against an OCP executive. Jones admits his culpability in Morton's death and releases an Ed 209 to destroy Robocop. Although he escapes, Robocop is attacked by the police force on OCP's order and is badly damaged. He is rescued by Lewis who brings him to an abandoned steel mill to repair himself. Angered by OCP's underfunding and short staffing, the police force goes on strike. Detroit descends into chaos as riots break out through the city. Jones frees Bodiger and his remaining gang, arming them with high-powered weaponry to destroy Robocop. Bodiger's men are quickly eliminated at the steel mill, but Lewis is badly injured. Robocop is trapped under the steel gritters, kills Bodiger, stabbing him in the throat. Robocop then confronts Jones at the OCP tower during a board meeting revealing the truth behind Morton's murder. Jones takes the old man hostage and is fired from OCP. That nullifies the Direct 4 Prime directive and allows Robocop to shoot him, 
causing Jones to crash through a window to his death. The old man compliments Robocop's shooting and asks for his name, and he replies, Murphy. End the movie. Robocop was released in North American theaters on July 17, 1987. The budget for this film cost about $13.7 million to make. As a result, it earned $53.4 million at the box office. Robocop has been critically reevaluated since its release and has been hailed as one of the best films of the 1980s and one of the greatest sci fi action films ever made. The film has been praised for its depiction of a robot affected by the loss of humanity in contrast with the stoic and emotionless robotic characters of that era. Robocop has continued to be analyzed for its themes such as the nature of humanity, personal identity, corporate greed, and corruption, and is seen as a reboot of the era's Reaganomics policies. Its success created a franchise with the sequels Robocop 2, released in 1990, and Robocop 3, released in 1993. A children's animated series, a, a bunch of live-action TV shows, video games, comic books, toys, clothes, and other merchandise. A remake was made in 2004, but that remake sucked. Robocop was released in North American theaters on July 17, 1987. The budget for this film cost about $13.7 million to make. As a result, it earned $53.4 million at the box office. Robocop has been critically reevaluated since its release and has been hailed as one of the best films of the 1980s and one of the greatest sci fi action films ever made. The film has been praised for its depiction of a robot affected by the loss of humanity in contrast with the stoic and emotionless robotic characters of that era. Robocop has continued to be analyzed for its themes such as the nature of humanity, personal identity, corporate greed, and corruption, and is seen as a reboot of the era's Reaganomics policies. Its success created a franchise with the sequels Robocop 2, released in 1990, and Robocop 3, released in 1993. A children's animated series, a, a bunch of live-action TV shows, video games, comic books, toys, clothes, and other merchandise. A remake was made in 2004, but that remake sucked. Long live the king.